Hi, John. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. It's really a, an honor and a privilege. Sure, my pleasure. So you have many years experience in IP in the United States. How is the current COVID-19 situation impacting the hand space in general? And which are the major changes you've seen in the last few months? Well, I mean, there's first a practical, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, aspect is that many of our researchers, in the beginning, actually all of our researchers were quarantined at home. And that has sort of put a damper on our uh, on the research activities that underlie the panacea activity. If there was a silver lining to that, uh, it was in the, um, in the fact that, as usual, uh, we all have a big backlog of patents for applications. So we can finally take care of that while our researchers are, are forced to stay at home and cannot do experiments. And, uh, but now, um, since we can't wait for too long, especially because our, you know we're not a large company, we're fairly large, but we don't have the resources of, of the major players in, in the federal market. Our researchers have begun heading back to the lab in staggered numbers. That is, somebody goes on Monday, somebody goes on Friday, somebody picks up. So we are going to see uh, new patent applications coming in pretty soon. On the other hand, I'm quite happy that our researchers are forced to stay home a little bit because they stay at home and think maybe they can brew up for better ideas. Usually, uh, you know, the scientists have often had the best ideas while they were in uh, forces and activities. Another, uh, I think, um, good, uh, something that saves, has saved us in part is the fact that our company was purchased by a Taiwanese conglomerate a few years ago. And we had started collaborating with the group in Taiwan. And uh, Taiwan is one of the few countries that have handled the pandemic really well. So there's, this has, there's been hardly a, a disruption in their activity. So some of our work is now being conducted by our colleagues in Taiwan. And we meet with them over in internet. So that has also allowed us to, to keep our, our activities going. So, John, so some of you, you had mentioned that some of the scientists had more time to think. Has any of, have any of them come up with great ideas during this time? Uh, yes, yes. I've seen, um, I've seen a better, uh, I think they've some, some good ideas. They've also been able to dedicate more time to their idea. As we were discussing before, oftentimes inventors are in a rush to file a patent, so they provide you with disclosures that are not really well thought. I mean, the basic idea is there, but it's not fleshed out or thought. Uh, you know, or, uh, uh, I, I can put it this way, you can see the inventor hasn't chewed on it as, as much as they could, whereas now they do have the time to think a little more and to give you a more, uh, think of better application and develop the idea better. In general, filing a patent, do you find that most most inventors are already prepared, or once they, you know, talk to a, a patent professional like yourself, they then are able to flesh out what may work in the market, what could be monetized? Yes, yes. They they uh, some of the the more uh, the more senior inventors uh, have already um, have, have a better better feeling for. What the market wants, uh, what 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 is, but this but this I find usual. Uh, usually, I find only the most senior inventors, people who've been out there for 10, 20, 30 years, people who uh, work, especially those who work in startup companies. They are particularly uh, open. They're particularly keen on on what will sell and what won't. Others, you still need to discuss with you, or a lot of times you have to temper their expectation. Uh, what the inventor sees as a great invention may not necessarily be uh, that novel, simply because somebody discovered it, but it's somebody 10 years ago in another country. So uh, this doesn't mean that our inventor was not good or did not do a good job, but it's simply somebody else has already done it. So, um, and this is not a very pleasant aspect of my job, but, but nevertheless, uh, we need to do it to temper their expectations. 
there's a famous startup book called The Lean Startup, where I think it mentions a lot about like pivoting and you know not being too set in your ways until until one sees how the market's going to react to you, react to your product. So how yeah. would you say that works out when it comes to innovation? Um, I think it's it's um, that's a good question. The the uh, when you're past the uh, the uh, the startup stage, I think you're referring especially to when you're no longer a startup. When, when you're you know when you're a, a, a established company, what I see happen is that inventors can enter a kind of autopilot mode uh, and come up with small uh, incremental um, improvements or no improvements at all in, in the core technology of a company without, uh, without looking at other possible applications uh, or, or without, uh, in other words, they get set in their way. This is uh, especially true, I think, has happened in big clients I've had in the past. Uh, I noticed that clients I had who used to be one of the two or three players in a certain field, for instance, aeronautics, it's only Boeing and Airbus. Um, you do get set in your way. You don't feel, uh, um, you don't feel uh, encouraged. You know, the startup spirit is not there. And even if there is, uh, oftentimes you have to move and open your own time. You having experienced both working as an outside counsel and now currently working uh, as a senior intellectual property attorney at Inc. Uh, Corporation, uh, one of your areas of expertise is preparing and prosecuting U.S. and foreign patents. What are the challenges and opportunities the current situation presents to this line of work in particular? Patenting something is fairly easy uh, in the pharmaceutical and diagnostic field. Uh, the real hurdle is going, going through the uh, certification by um, by, orga by organizations like the Federal Drug Authority, I'm sorry, the Food and Drug Administration for India in Europe. Hopefully this will spur them to work a little faster, to, to make it easier to get the products to market. Um, and and get faster certification. So, uh, and that's one factor. The other factor is the there will be more there will be more uh, capital invested, especially on the part of uh, venture capitalists in the diagnostic and pharmaceutical area. Now, that does not concern us directly because we're already an independent company, but. Uh, typically, our well, the platforms we try to develop in the diagnostic field, we will need to collaborate with uh, with uh, biotech companies or bad or even biotech startups. And this this should uh, definitely and of course startups always have a hard time finding new investors. Now, whether while it's true that events like epidemics tend to uh, reach a dry up in startup money, usually startup money starts. Uh, disappearing when events like these are, are uh, unfortunately occur. Uh, I don't see that happening in the in pharmaceutical or or, or diagnostic uh, field, especially if the startup company sells uh, their investment. Hey, we found a way of finding, you know, di di diagnosing COVID-19. So being that the, in general, patents take uh, 12 months to become, I think it's 12 months to become public yeah. information. Yeah. So how would, or 18 months actually, how would uh, how would people how would companies such as yourself know which startups to look for? Or who has the the right tools that can be a good collaboration? Yeah, usually we um, we look at what they've already published, what's already what's already out there. Uh, you do we uh, as you're correct. We don't know what they're doing right now, and we won't until a year from now. But what we can see is what they've been doing until a year. Have some of the companies uh, been reaching out to companies such as yourselves, signing in they have. and then giving? They have. Oh, so there has been more collaboration on that front. Okay. Yeah. There, there has been more collaboration, and uh, especially 
I would say if I were a, a biotech company or like a diagnostic company and I need some electronics company to develop all the let's say, you know, the you the what do you want to develop if you're a, a diagnostic company is what they call a point of care diagnostic. Instead of giving me the sample, and I have to give it to one of the big, big players in the market, and that's their own. Uh, for them to do it at their in their factory, and then give me back the results, and they can get a lot of a lot of that. Uh, if you're in, if you're a diagnostic company, you like to offer doctors, look, you can do this this diagnostic step in your in your uh, doctor's office. You take a swab for the patient, you put it into you mix it with ingredients, you put it into my machine, and snap. In half an hour, the result comes back. In order to do that, you need somebody who makes the chemis- chemical parts, uh, all the reactants, and what have you, and those who do the electronics, you know, all the machine and all the all move, moving the, the sample about. And that's not always possible. Not all companies have the skills in all of them. So, John, um, from what I understand, many of the biotech companies. And uh, in the pharma industry, there's, there's a race to protect the rights and invent that molecule, that information that could be a potential gold mine. Um, do you see this as, as being uh, like mo- in a year from now, do you feel like this may cause a lot of like IP litigation and, and disputes yes. between companies? Yes, def- definitely. Uh, especially... Um uh this arises a lot of time when a, a product uh is not completely and uh, uh what do i say uh, developed within under the roof of one company that's that's the uh, when you when you have collaboration and the contracts underlying these collaborations are not well uh, well uh, drafted so it's unsure as to who will own Another part is when professors collaborate first with this company, then with this other company, so who owns it? And, and that's an, 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 an one aspect. Uh, thereafter, uh, there will be, uh, yes, there will be uh, litigation because a lot of these patents won't be really well, uh, well drafted because they've been drafted in a rush. So my competitor can say, well, you do have a patent, but it's garbage. My dog could have written that patent. Or or, uh, right. or or you haven't done this, you haven't done that, or or uh, and the pharmaceutical companies can be very limited. Now, I have the caveat here is that companies making vaccines, I don't know how much they will be litig- to litigate. Let me explain. Uh, when you're usually pharmaceutical companies make the most money from treatment, and that for instance HIV treatment, and that you have to take this pill all your life. So there's a lot of money to be A vaccine, you just take a shot and you're good. And you're still good. There's no need to put it in you know, other, other care or, or. So you will notice that's why private companies usually don't invest much in vaccines. But having, you know, by giving the, the fact that it will be like, I don't know, a billion people getting this vaccine, that comes out, then I can see uh, what people It will be right for litigation. Okay, and and to, thinking about young professionals that may be watching this coming into the space, would you say that they should uh, specialize in any particular technology? Yeah, um, the uh, the uh, in my in my experience, the patent industry likes people who are very specialized specialized in one field, which I don't think is that good in reality because having experience in more than one field makes you a more more creative, but that's but it is what it is. Uh, the what I do see a lot of uh, where there's a lot of unmet demand in the in the electronic engineering and in the software, mostly because a, a good computer programmer, a good electronic engineer, already received they're pretty well paid by whatever Silicon Valley. And to move into the uh, uh, so to uh, move into this um, to actually go through the trouble of going to law school or becoming a patent lawyer, they need to be really enticed by high tech. Um, with respect to biotech scientists, 
uh, my impression is that there are simply too many biotech postdocs. Now, uh, by postdocs, I mean post graduating uh, after, after PhD. Now, there is, there is uh, room in the field, and especially I think now there will be new impetus for biotech discovery, especially in the field of vaccine or biotech cures. So, um, outside of computer sciences and uh, double E, as we call electronic engineering or electrical engineering, Definitely biologics is the hot. That's where it is, it's where 